Pan. Um, five minute call. I call Maureen Pugh. Thank you, sir. I stand to speak also to the e exclusive economic zone and continental shelf environmental effects amendment bill in its second reading today. And this really is an odd bill to be debating in the House here today, Mr Speaker, and I consider it a waste of the House's time, to be perfectly frank. It was a waste of time of the Select Committee, it was a waste of time of the advisers of the Parliamentary Council and the Committee's Secretariat that supported the Select Committee, that such a non-controversial amendment to be making, all parties here agreed to the change. However, that side of the House insisted that it be put through this process, uh, consuming that valuable staff and uh, committee time and also this House's time. And it's such a ma minor um, amendment to be making, and it could have been easily dealt with as part of a statutes amendment bill. And as was suggested by my very astute colleague here beside me, the Honourable Scott Simpson, in his first reading speech, even, even sought leave of the House that this bill proceeds forthwith through all remaining stages without debate and on one vote. But that side of the House wouldn't go there, and we may wonder why, Mr Speaker. It certainly wasn't in the interests of expediency or efficiency, and it certainly wasn't in the interests of openness and transparency that we hear so much about but we are yet to witness in practice. And it wasn't in the interests of any potential submitters because the process was so truncated that no submissions were called for. But the irony of it, sir, is that prior to the bill being introduced, there were seven um, organisations that were contacted and they were um, an invited to make comment. So these seven representatives were from the petroleum and seabed mining industries, and five of them came back and said that they were also in support of the minor changes in this bill. But the irony, sir, is that they were invited to make comment on such a minor amendment to this bill, which is absolutely laughable when you stack it up against the consultation on something else of far more consequence and importance to that sector, their future and the future of the oil and gas industry here in New Zealand. A decision that has no justifiable basis. It's certainly not rational. It's certainly not an environmental um, benefit. It certainly has no economic sense. And the most bizarre thing is it actually has no benefit in terms of improving global emissions. So we need to ask ourselves, sir, is this a stalling tactic in getting this bill across the line? And I've noticed that over several weeks, is that we are dealing with such minor legislation here or we are dealing with legislation left over from the former national-led government. And this um, just goes to uh, demonstrate yet again the gaping hole that there is in the work coming before this House and what is actually stacked up on the order paper, sir. This bill, simply putting right a, a drafting error in the original bill, we've heard all that today, inserts a, inserts a new clause 52A, entitled Cost Recovery for Boards of Inquiry, and that simply means that the, uh, there may be recoverable costs from an applicant for the actual and reasonable expenses incurred in relation to a Board of Inquiry. Um, these actual and reasonable costs are already recoverable under the Environmental Protection Authority uh, in relation to their receiving, processing and deciding on applications for marine consents. And so this bill simply may, brings it into um, consistency. Um, it may, it narrow lines with the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, Authority and the uh, Resource Management Act of 1991, sir, and I commend it to the House. Thank you. Speaker. I call Andrew Warren Clark. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I rise and I believe.